this is Mr. Aiden. Welcome to my Unit 8 Acids and Bases review for AP Chemistry. Remember, this is going to be 11 to 15 percent of the AP exam, so this is a large percentage for acids and bases. And we're going to get to topic 8.1, which is introduction to acids and bases. Keep in mind, it's going to really center on topic 8.1 is going to center on just a couple of equations on your equation sheet. The pH equals negative log of the H plus. The pOH equals negative log of the OH minus, and the Kw is equal to the H plus times the OH minus, which is equal to 1 times 10 to negative 14. But remember, that's only at 25 degrees Celsius and in pure water. In pure water, water has a pH of 7, which means it has a pOH of 7, which means it also has a pKw of 14 because the Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. But take a look. At temperatures above 25 degrees Celsius, the pH gets lower. It actually gets more acidic. And for temperatures lower than 25 degrees Celsius, it's going to be a little bit more basic. And that is topic 8.1. On the 8.2, which is talking about the pH and pOH of strong acids and bases. We have to understand what strong acids and bases are. These are arrhenius acids and bases, which means they dissociate 100% completely. Which take a look at figure one and figure two. Which of those is an arrhenius acid? Which one is going to dissociate, break up into H plus, H3O plus, and the A minus completely? That's figure two. So you can see figure one is still all together. That would be a weak acid. But a strong acid is something that dissociates or ionizes 100%, which means you're going to use your pH equations immediately. You're going to use your negative log of your H plus or your negative log of your OH minus to find your pH or your pOH immediately. And remember, since they ionize 100%, they will conduct electricity. They are strong electrolytes. Well, you got to know your list of strong acids and bases. Strong arrhenius acids are like HCl, HBrHi. The most famous of that one is hydrochloric acid, HCl. There's also H2SO4, HNO3, and HClO4. The AP exam has been using HClO4 a lot, so just keep in mind that is a strong acid. And you don't have to write HCl. You don't have to write HClO4. All you have to write is H+, because remember, those dissociate 100%. Strong arrhenius bases are like group 1 and group 2 hydroxides, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, things like barium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide. You don't have to write any of these. You just have to recognize them and write OH- anytime you have a strong arrhenius base. Well, also in topic 8.2, I said use your pH equations immediately. So the first question says, what's the pH of a 0.01 molar solution of HClO4? HClO4 is a strong acid, which means it's going to dissociate 100%, which means if you have 0.010 molar of HClO4, you have 0.010 molar of H+. So all you have to do is negative log that H+. Negative log of 0.010, which ends up giving you a pH of 2.00. Take a look at the second one. The second one says calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of barium hydroxide. Well, keep in mind, barium hydroxide is a strong base, which means it's going to dissociate completely in the barium ions and hydroxide ions. Just take a look. How many hydroxides do you have? It says OH2. You have two hydroxides. For, so for every one barium hydroxide, you have two hydroxides, which means 0.1 molar barium hydroxide is actually 0.2 molar of OH minus. So we're going to negative log the OH minus, negative log 0.20 molar, and we end up getting a pOH of 0 0.70, which means we just subtract that from 14. That gives us a pH of 13.3, 13.3. Well, let's move on to topic 8.3, which is weak acids and base equilibria. This is dealing with bronsted lowry acids and bases. And remember, if strong acids like Arrhenius acids dissociate 100%, Weak acids will, and weak bases, will barely dissociate. So take a look at this HCN. This is a weak acid. You can see the HCN is donating the H plus to the water. When it donates the H plus to the water, you get H3O plus, a conjugate acid, and CN minus, the conjugate base, the conjugate base. And take a look. The Ka is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. So if you know what the Ka is, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10, you can negative log that Ka to find the pKa. And of course, the pKa here is 9.21 if you negative log that number. Now, if we have 0 0.0200 molar of HCN in pure water, we're going to use an equilibrium expression. This is on your equation sheet as well. 
The Ka is equal to the H2O plus times the Cn minus conjugate base times the conjugate acid over the HCm. And so the Ka is 6.2 times 10 to negative 10. The HCn is going to be 0 0.0200 molar. We can assume that it's going to stay roughly the same. It will go down a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but remember, it's barely dissociating. So it's still going to be almost 0 0.0200 molar. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio of the H0 plus to the CM minus. So we're going to call that X to X. So you can just solve for X. And X ends up equaling 3.52 times 10 to negative 6 molar. Just do your algebra. You'll see it ends up being 3.52 times 10 to negative 6 molar. And that X is equal to the H3 plus concentration as well as the conjugate base, the CN minus concentration. Well, if it's equal to the H3 plus concentration, you can negative log that number to find the pH, which ends up being 5.45. 5.45. Move on to topic 8.4. 8.4 is about acid-base reactions and buffers. So we're going to take a look at some acid-base reactions. Now remember, if you have a strong acid reacted with a strong base, you're, all you have to write is H plus plus OH minus, and that's going to make water. It's also going to make a salt, but that salt's going to be a spectator ion. So all you need to write is H plus plus OH minus makes water. If we have a weak acid with a strong base, like in a titration, that HA can be any weak acid. It could be HF, HCN, HC2H3O2, any kind of weak acid. And the HA, the weak acid, gives away an H+, donates an H+, to the OH-, makes water, and a conjugate base, that A-. The weak base reacted with a strong acid is the base plus H+, plus, and we're going to get BH+, plus or HB+, plus, whichever one you want to uh, think of it like. But the H3O+, plus is going to be donating the H+. Plus. Well, guess what? We can also have a weak acid reacted with a weak base, if you have a weak acid like HA and a base that we call B, remember this B could be any kind of weak base, the HA is going to donate an H+, plus, which means you're going to be left with a conjugate base A- minus and BH+, plus, which is your conjugate acid. Well, it all, topic 8.4 also has to deal with buffers. And how do we know if we have a buffer is when we have concentrations, high concentrations of your weak acid and a conjugate base. Remember, strong acids don't buffer. They don't do any buffering. But weak acids with its conjugate base will be a buffer. Do you see? We have 0.020 molar of HF, that's your weak acid, and 0.020 molar of NAF, that's your F minus. We have, not in pure water, but we have a weak acid with its conjugate base, which means, ding, 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 we have a buffer. Now, if this is exactly the same concentration, the same number of moles of my weak acid with my conjugate base, then your Ka will, your pH will be equal to your pKa. So we can negative log the Ka to find the pKa of 3.18, and that should be the pH. Well, remember, the reason we have a buffer is this buffer is going to stabilize the pH because this buffer has acid and it has a conjugate base. And so it can fight off, it can, it can, it can fight off strong acids and strong bases. So you can see this reaction right here. If we add a strong acid to this solution, just a little drop, 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 the strong acid is going to react with the F minus to make HF. If we add a strong base, just drop, drop, drop to this buffer, the OH minus is going to react with the HF the HF is going to donate the H+, plus, and we're going to make a little bit of conjugate base, and the pH ends up getting stabilized. Well, topic 8.5 is dealing with acid-base titrations, and remember there are this first, uh, this first graph on the left. You can see we're starting with a strong base because the pH is very, very high. You can see the equivalence point, the point at which the moles of your acid are equal to the moles of my base, is equal to 7. And you can see... Right there, that tells us we use 30 mils of the hydrochloric acid. And we can use the equation M1V equals M2V2. 30 mils of whatever concentration of the HCl, those number of moles are going to equal the moles of your strong base. So that's a strong acid and a strong base. Well, if we have this graph to the right, is a weak acid. How do we know it's a weak acid? Look at where it's starting off at. It's starting off at a higher pH, not down there too. A little bit above 3, it starts off at a higher pH. Look at where the equivalence point is. The equivalence point is above 7 because we have a conjugate base up there. That's making a conjugate base. And you can see 
we use 10 milliliters of the NaOH to get to that equivalence point. And so you could use M1V1 equals M2V2 at the equivalence point. Just make sure you keep acids on one side, bases on the other. There's also something else we want to see on this weak acid base. Weak, sorry, weak acid with a strong base titration graph is halfway to the equivalence point. Halfway to the equivalence point would be 5 milliliters, and the pH is equal to the pKa. So we can kind of guesstimate that the pKa is going to be about 5.4 maybe. pH is 5.4, which means the pKa is 5.4. Move on to topic 8.6. We're going to deal with molecular structure of acids and bases. First thing we want to see is the stronger the acid has the higher Ka value. The stronger the acid has the higher Ka value. So you can see 1.9 times into negative 1 is a higher Ka than 3.3 times into negative 2. Uh, watch out for the scientific notation there, but it's higher, which means acid 2 is stronger. Why is acid, What's the big difference between acid 1 and acid 2 of their structures is, do you see right here we have the Br, the bromine, is bonded to the carbon as opposed to the hydrogen. And bromine is more electronegative. So more electronegative elements tend to stabilize the conjugate base relative to the conjugate acid, and it makes it a stronger acid. Well, if we come over here, we have two bases here. You can see the NF3, the F is way more electronegative than the a hydrogen, which means that stabilizes that conjugate base. That makes that a stronger acid which actually makes NF3 a weaker base. And H3 would be, conclusively, a stronger base. And so it can work vice versa. Topic 8.7 is dealing with pH and pKa. You can see right here, we have a buffer. Why do we have a buffer? We have a weak acid with our conjugate base. We have HClO and we have ClO minus. Don't look at the Na. It's a spectator on the Na plus, spectator on HClO with the ClO minus. And this buffer, it should have a pKa of 7.4, but you can see our buffer solution has a pH higher than the pKa. What does that mean if the pH is higher than the pKa? That means you must have a little bit more base because bases have high pHs, which means we have more of the ClO minus than we do of the HClO. We have more of the conjugate base than the weak acid. If the pH was less than the 7.4, then we would know we would have more acid than our base. Let's move to the topic 8.8. 8.8 is properties of buffers. We've already talked about buffers, that buffers are when we have a large concentration of conjugate acid-base pairs. And you can see here we have a conjugate, sorry, we have a weak acid, HNO2, and we have NO2 minus, the conjugate base. We have one, two, three, four, five particles of the HNO2. We have one, two, three, four, five particles of the NO2 minus which means we have a perfect buffer. This can fight off. This is a great buffering capacity against acids and bases because we have the same number of moles, which means the pH is going to be equal to the pKa. And buffers, of course, stabilize their pH because they have great buffering capacity. And so you see to the right-hand side here, this pK of this, this buffer, a perfect buffer, would be 4.25. But look at our pH. It's a little bit lower. So that must mean we have more of our weak acid than we do our conjugate base because the pH is a little bit less. Topic 8.9 moves into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And so the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is on your equation sheet. It's pH equals pKa plus the log of the A minus, that's the conjugate base, over the, the HA, the weak acid. Now, if you have a perfect buffer, if you have the same amount of A minus and the HA, log of 1 over 1 is 0. So that means your pH is equal to the pKa. But look at this. We have 0 0.010 molar of the NaF, that's the F minus, and we have 0 0.020 molar of the HF, that's the weak, weak acid. I have more acid than I do base, don't I? So if I have more acid than I do of the conjugate base, if I have more HF than I do of the F minus, that means the pH is going to be a little bit less than the pKa. So the perfect buffer is 3.18. This pH is going to be a little bit less. If you do the calculation, if you plug in your numbers here, you would get 2.88, 2.88. Well, topic 8.10 is about buffering capacity. Buffering capacity, here's a sample problem. You can see HF, that's a weak acid, and we have F minus. If we have this in pure water, it's not a buffer, but if we have HF and F minus, we have a buffer. And so you can see the pH of the buffer, we're trying to prepare a pH of 3.50. We put in some F minus here, 
and we put in HF. And they said the buffer is accidentally prepared using 90% pure NAF, not 99% pure NAF, which means I have less purity of the NAF. What does that mean? Uh, that results in less moles of the F minus, which means if I have less moles of the F minus, the numerator in my Henderson Hasselbalch equation, that means I have relatively more moles of the HF. I have more moles of my weak acid. What does that do to the pH? That makes your pH go lower. And think about it. If you have more moles of your acid, your weak acid, your HF, then you're going to be able to have a greater buffering capacity against bases. Again, if there's more acid than the conjugate base, you're going to be better at fighting off bases. If it's the other way around, if you have more conjugate base, you're going to be better at fighting off acids. You're going to be better at the buffering capacity. And that is Unit 8, AP Chemistry, Acids and Bases. Hope this helped. This is Mr. Aiden signing off. See you.